Hello, Fame Story TV family, and welcome back to our channel. In the last 24 hours, we have received the sad news of the passing of the extraordinary talents, and today's episodes is dedicated to honoring their memory. Additionally, we will recap the stars whom we have recently lost. Before we start, we kindly ask for your support if this video or the legacies of these remarkable individuals have touched your heart. Please consider giving this video a thumbs up as a sign of respect and remembrance. Thank you. Qui va se passer aujourd'hui sur la période 2014-2020? Claude Gavirc is a French politician known for his leadership in regional governance and his contributions to the development of public policy in France. Born on June 21, 1947, in Bergen-Belsen, Germany, to Polish-Jewish parents who survived the Holocaust, Gewerk moved to France as a young child and became actively involved in politics later in life. Gewerk's political career began in local government, but he rose to prominence in 2004 when he was elected president of the Regional Council of Picardy, a position he held until 2015. As a member of the Socialist Party, Gewerk's leadership was marked by a focus on economic development, education, and transportation infrastructure, as well as efforts to modernize the region's industries and promote sustainable growth. During his tenure, Gewerk worked to strengthen the local economy by supporting innovation and creating opportunities for small businesses. He was also committed to improving educational access and job training programs, particularly for young people and those in disadvantaged areas. Under his guidance, Picardy saw improvements in its transportation networks, including investments in railways and road systems. Making the region more accessible and connected, Gierwerk was also known for his pragmatic approach to politics, often working across party lines to achieve his goals. His efforts earned him respect as a dedicated and effective leader in regional politics. After stepping down from his role as president of the Regional Council in 2015, Claude Gewerks retired from active politics, but left behind a legacy of progress and regional development. His contributions to Picardy's infrastructure and economic growth continue to have a lasting impact on the region's residents and its future trajectory. A young Tim Johnson began his political career in the state legislature back in 1979. Tim Johnson is an American politician who served as a U.S. Senator from South Dakota from 1997 to 2015. Born on December 28, 1946, in Canton, South Dakota, Johnson was raised in a farming community and pursued higher education at the University of South Dakota, earning a bachelor's and master's degree. He later received his law degree from Georgetown University. Johnson began his political career in the South Dakota House of Representatives in 1979, followed by a tenure in the South Dakota Senate. In 1986, he was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives, where he served for five terms, representing South Dakota's at-large district. His legislative focus included issues important to rural America, such as agriculture, veterans' affairs, and economic development. In 1996, Johnson was elected to the U.S. Senate, where he continued his advocacy for South Dakotans, playing key roles in banking, housing, and military matters. A stroke in 2006 led to a significant health challenge, but Johnson returned to complete his term and remained a respected figure in Washington. He chose not to seek re-election in 2014, retiring after nearly four decades of public service. His legacy is marked by dedication to his state and strong bipartisan cooperation. Pierre Vernier is a French actor known for his extensive career in film, television, and theater, which has spanned over six decades. Born on May 25, 1931, in saint jean d'Angely, France, Vernier developed a passion for acting early in life and trained at the prestigious Conservatoire National Supérieur d'Art Dramatique in Paris. Vernier made his film debut in the 1950s and quickly gained recognition for his talent. He became a familiar face in French cinema, starring in a variety of genres, from comedies to dramas, often portraying supporting yet memorable roles. Some of his notable films include Army of Shadows 1969, directed by Jean-Pierre Melville, and The Discreet Charm of the Bourgeoisie 1972, by Louis Buñuel. In addition to his film work, Bernier had a prolific career on television and the stage. 
He appeared in numerous French TV series and theatrical productions, earning critical praise for his versatility and depth as a performer. Vernier's long career in the arts has made him a respected figure in French entertainment. Still active in his later years, Pierre Vernier remains a beloved actor in France, admired for his dedication to his craft and his contributions to French cinema and theater. Renald White is an American model and actor, best known for being one of the first African-American male models to achieve widespread success in the fashion industry. Born in the early 1950s, White broke significant barriers during the 1970s, a time when the modeling world was predominantly dominated by white faces. He gained attention for his striking looks, charisma, and professionalism, which helped pave the way for greater diversity in fashion. White's modeling career began in the early 1970s, and he quickly became a favorite among top designers and photographers. He appeared in numerous high-profile campaigns for brands such as Ralph Lauren and Calvin Klein, becoming a trailblazer in the industry. His work in print ads and on the runway challenged stereotypes and helped create more opportunities for black models in fashion. White also graced the covers of popular magazines like GQ and Ebony, further cementing his status as a leading male model of his time. Beyond his modeling career, White pursued acting, appearing in several television shows and films. While he did not reach the same level of fame in acting as he did in modeling, his roles in shows like The Cosby Show and Law and & Order demonstrated his versatility as a performer. Renald White's groundbreaking career as one of the first successful African-American male models continues to inspire aspiring models and artists of color. His contributions helped change the fashion industry's perception of beauty and open doors for future generations of diverse talent. Today, he is remembered as a key figure in promoting diversity and representation in fashion, an achievement that has had a lasting impact on the industry. Ride on you, boy. Kinky Friedman is an American singer, songwriter, novelist, humorist, and politician known for his unique blend of country music, satire, and political activism. Born Richard Kinky Friedman on November 1, 1944, in Chicago, Illinois, he grew up in Texas and was raised in a Jewish family. Friedman's colorful personality and unconventional career have made him a beloved figure in American pop culture. Friedman gained national attention in the 1970s as the leader of his band Kinky Friedman and the Texas Jew Boys, known for its satirical and often provocative songs. His blend of country music and irreverent humor resulted in hits like They Ain't Making Jews Like Jesus Anymore and Ride Em Jew Boy, the latter being a tribute to Holocaust survivors. His music stood out for its bold political and social commentary, as well as his willingness to push boundaries. In addition to his music career, Friedman is a successful author, writing a series of mystery novels in which he stars as the lead character, a fictionalized version of himself. His books, such as Greenwich Killing Time, and armadillos and old lace are known for their sharp wit, quirky characters, and distinctive humor. Friedman's career took another turn when he entered politics. In 2006, he ran as an independent candidate for governor of Texas, gaining attention for his unconventional campaign and outsider status. Although he did not win, his candidacy solidified his status as a cultural icon. Kinky Friedman continues to write, perform, and entertain, staying true to his offbeat, rebellious spirit. Whether through music, literature, or politics, his contributions to American culture are marked by humor, activism, and an unapologetic approach to challenging the status quo. Doug Sheehan is an American actor best known for his work on television, particularly in soap operas and primetime dramas. Born on April 27, 1949, in Santa Monica, California, Sheehan developed an interest in acting early in life. After attending the University of California, he pursued a career in television and quickly found success. Sheehan first gained widespread recognition for his role as Joe Kelly on the popular daytime soap opera General Hospital, where he appeared from 1979 to 1982. His performance as the charming lawyer won him a devoted fan base and established him as a rising star in the world of soap operas, 
After his success on General Hospital, Sheehan transitioned to primetime television, landing one of his most notable roles as Ben Gibson on the long-running CBS series Knots Landing. From 1983 to 1987, he played Ben, a journalist and the love interest of Valene Ewing, played by Joan Van Ark. His character became a fan favorite, contributing to the show's popularity during its peak years. In addition to his work on Knots Landing, Sheehan appeared in several TV movies and guest starred on various shows, including Day by Day and Clueless. Though his television roles brought him the most recognition, Sheehan also appeared in films and theater, showcasing his versatility as an actor. While Sheehan stepped back from acting in the late 1990s, his contributions to television, particularly his roles in General Hospital and Knott's Landing, remain memorable to fans of the era. Doug Sheehan's successful career, spanning both daytime and primetime television, made him a familiar and beloved face in the entertainment industry during the 1980s and 1990s. Or somebody thinks they've seen something they shouldn't. That's true of North by Northwest. It's true. Robert Town is an acclaimed American screenwriter, director, and producer, best known for writing some of the most iconic films of the 1970s. Born on November 23, 1934, in Los Angeles, California, Town began his Hollywood career in the 1960s, working as a script doctor and penning screenplays for television shows and low-budget films. His talent for creating sharp, memorable dialogue and intricate plots soon earned him a reputation as one of the best writers in the industry. Town's breakthrough came in 1974, when he wrote the screenplay for Chinatown, a neo-noir classic directed by Roman Polanski. The film, starring Jack Nicholson and Faye Dunaway, was a critical and commercial success, earning Town an Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay. Chinatown is widely regarded as one of the greatest screenplays in film history, praised for its complex characters, sharp dialogue, and intricate exploration of corruption and power in 1930s Los Angeles. In addition to Chinatown, Town wrote other notable screenplays, including Shampoo 1975, The Last Detail 1973, and Mission Impossible 1996. His work often focused on flawed, morally ambiguous characters and explored themes of power, corruption, and personal redemption. Town also directed several films, including Personal Best 1982 and Tequila Sunrise 1988, though his directorial efforts never quite matched the success of his screenwriting. Throughout his career, Robert Town has been known for his meticulous craftsmanship, dedication to storytelling, and lasting influence on the art of screenwriting. His contributions to cinema have left an indelible mark on Hollywood, and he remains a revered figure in the film industry for his work on some of the most influential movies of the 20th century. And the mountains blowing like the breeze. Come. William Rusty Golden is an American musician, songwriter, and producer, best known for his work in country and gospel music. Born in 1964, Rusty comes from a family deeply rooted in music. He is the son of William Lee Golden, a longtime member of the legendary country music group, the Oak Ridge Boys. Growing up in such a musical environment, Rusty was surrounded by the influence of country, gospel, and southern rock, which shaped his career. Rusty Golden began his music career as a member of the country rock band, the Boys Band, in the early 1980s. The group, which blended country and rock elements, achieved moderate success, and Rusty honed his songwriting and performing skills during this time. Following the band's dissolution, he shifted towards songwriting and producing, finding success in Nashville's country music scene. In addition to his work in country music, Rusty has made significant contributions to the gospel music genre. He has written songs for various artists and collaborated with notable musicians. His songs have been performed by artists like the Oak Ridge Boys and other country and gospel musicians, showcasing his versatility as a songwriter. Throughout his career, Rusty Golden has faced personal challenges, including struggles with addiction, but he has also undergone significant personal transformation. He has openly discussed his journey to sobriety, crediting faith and music as integral parts of his recovery process. Rusty Golden's contributions to country and gospel music both as a performer and songwriter, have solidified his place in the industry. 
His ability to blend genres and craft meaningful, heartfelt songs has made him a respected figure in the music community, carrying on the Golden Family's musical legacy. Judith Belushi Pisano is an American artist, writer, and producer. Known for her contributions to the arts and her role as the widow of the iconic comedian John Belushi. Born on January 15, 1951, in Chicago, Illinois, she was raised in a creative environment that nurtured her artistic talents. Judith attended the University of Illinois, where she studied painting and theater, eventually honing her skills in the performing arts. Judith's life changed dramatically when she met John Belushi, a founding member of the groundbreaking comedy group, The Second City, and a star of Saturday Night Live. They married in 1976, and Judith became a significant part of John's life and career, supporting him through his rise to fame in film and television. However, their life together was marked by the challenges of John's substance abuse, which ultimately led to his tragic death in 1982. In the years following John's passing, Judith worked to preserve his legacy. She co-produced and contributed to various projects related to John, including the documentary Belushi, 2018, which provides an intimate look at his life and career. Additionally, Judith is an accomplished artist, focusing on painting and mixed media. Her work often reflects her personal experiences and emotions, showcasing her unique perspective. Judith Belushi Pisano remains an influential figure in the arts, known for her resilience and dedication to honoring her late husband's memory while carving out her own identity as an artist and creative force. Through her art and storytelling, she continues to inspire others, sharing her journey and the impact of her life with John Belushi. Joe Bonsall is an American singer, author, and musician best known as a longtime member of the country and gospel group, the Oak Ridge Boys. Born on May 18, 1948, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Bonsall grew up in a musical environment. He joined the Oak Ridge Boys in 1973, replacing William Lee Golden as the tenor singer, and has since become an integral part of the group's signature sound, contributing to its success over the decades. The Oak Ridge Boys, originally a gospel group, transitioned to country music in the 1970s, and Bonsall's addition helped them achieve widespread fame. Their harmonies and crossover appeal made them one of the most successful country groups of the time, with hits like Elvira, Bobby Sue, and American Maid. Bonsall's powerful tenor voice and energetic stage presence played a key role in the band's success, earning them multiple Grammy Awards, CMA Awards, and a place in the Country Music Hall of Fame, Outside of his work with the Oak Ridge Boys, Bonzel is also an accomplished author. He has written several books, including G.I. Joe and Lily, a tribute to his parents, who both served in the military during World War II. He has also penned children's books and inspirational writings, showcasing his versatility as a writer. Bonsall has been vocal about his Christian faith and patriotism, often reflecting these values in his music and public appearances. He is an advocate for veterans' causes and frequently speaks at events honoring military service members. Even after decades in the music industry, Joe Bonsall continues to perform and tour with the Oak Ridge Boys, remaining a beloved figure in both country and gospel music circles. His contributions to American music and literature have earned him a dedicated fan base. Naomi Pomeroy is a prominent American chef and restaurateur known for her innovative approach to contemporary American cuisine. Born in 1975 in Portland, Oregon, she developed a passion for cooking at an early age. Growing up in a family that valued food and hospitality, Pomeroy honed her culinary skills through various kitchen experiences, ultimately pursuing a career in the restaurant industry. After studying at the Culinary Institute of America in New York, Pomeroy returned to Portland where she gained valuable experience working in various esteemed restaurants. Her dedication and talent quickly earned her recognition, and she soon began to make a name for herself in the local dining scene. In 2006, she opened her first restaurant, Beast, which quickly gained acclaim for its unique approach to seasonal ingredients and its intimate, communal dining style. The restaurant's success led to Pomeroy receiving numerous awards and accolades, 
including recognition as a finalist for the James Beard Award for Best Chef Northwest, Pomeroy is known for her commitment to sourcing local and sustainable ingredients, emphasizing the importance of quality and flavor in her dishes. She has appeared on several television programs, including Top Chef Masters and Iron Chef America, further showcasing her culinary skills to a broader audience. In addition to her work in the kitchen, Pomeroy is an advocate for women in the culinary industry, actively promoting gender equality and mentorship programs for aspiring chefs. Her influence extends beyond the restaurant world as she engages in community initiatives that support food education and access. Today, Naomi Pomeroy continues to be a leading figure in the culinary scene, known for her creativity, leadership, and dedication to the art of cooking. Her contributions have left a lasting impact on the restaurant industry and have inspired many chefs and food enthusiasts alike. Whitney Rydbeck is an American actress and model, known for her work in film and television. Born on February 14, 1980, in Los Angeles, California, she was raised in a family with deep roots in the entertainment industry, which inspired her early interest in acting and performance. Whitney's passion for the arts led her to pursue a career in the competitive world of show business. Rydbeck began her acting career in the late 1990s, landing small roles in various television series and films. She gained recognition for her versatility and talent, allowing her to transition from television to film seamlessly. Over the years, she appeared in numerous projects across different genres, showcasing her range as an actress. Some of her notable performances include guest appearances on popular television shows and supporting roles in independent films. In addition to her acting career, Whitney Rydbeck has worked as a model, collaborating with various fashion brands and participating in photo shoots that have further enhanced her visibility in the entertainment industry. Her striking looks and professionalism have earned her respect and admiration in both fields. Whitney is also passionate about philanthropy, supporting various charitable causes and organizations. She is known for her involvement in initiatives that promote education and empowerment for young women in the arts, using her platform to inspire and uplift others. As of today, Whitney Rydbeck continues to pursue her career in acting and modeling while remaining active in her community. Her dedication to her craft and her commitment to social causes make her a respected figure in the entertainment industry, and she remains an inspiration to aspiring actors and models alike. Cheng Pei Pei is a renowned Chinese actress and martial artist, celebrated for her contributions to the Hong Kong film industry, particularly in the genre of wuxia, martial arts films. Born on July 4, 1947, in Shanghai, China, Cheng moved to Hong Kong with her family during her childhood. She began her acting career at a young age, initially appearing in Cantonese films before making her mark in the 1960s, Cheng gained widespread recognition for her role in the 1966 film, Come Drink With Me, directed by King Hu. Her portrayal of the strong and skilled heroine, Golden Swallow, helped redefine female roles in martial arts cinema, showcasing a blend of grace and power. This film established her as a leading actress in the genre, earning her the title of Queen of Wuxia. Throughout the 1970s, Cheng starred in numerous films, including The Lady Hermit, 1971, and The Magic Blade, 1976, solidifying her status as a martial arts icon. Her performances were characterized by her exceptional martial arts skills and compelling on-screen presence, making her a favorite among audiences. In the 1980s, Cheng transitioned to television, appearing in popular series that further expanded her fan base. After taking a break from acting to raise her family, she made a successful return to the screen in the 2000s, including a notable role in Ang Lee's critically acclaimed film Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, 2000. Cheng Pei Pei's enduring legacy in film and martial arts has inspired many aspiring actresses and filmmakers. With her remarkable career spanning several decades, she remains a celebrated figure in the entertainment industry known for her contributions to the representation of strong female characters in cinema. Better than others, Lou was unique in so many ways. Lou Dobbs is an American television personality, 
radio host and author, known for his extensive career in journalism and commentary, particularly focusing on economic and political issues. Born on July 24, 1945, in Gabriel's New York, he grew up in a family that valued education and hard work. Dobbs attended Harvard University, where he earned a degree in economics in 1967. He began his journalism career at the Associated Press before joining CNN in 1980, where he gained prominence as an anchor and business correspondent. Dobbs hosted various programs, including Lou Dobbs Tonight, which became known for its in-depth analysis of economic issues and his outspoken views on immigration and trade policies. Over the years, his show earned a loyal following, particularly among viewers who appreciated his populist stance. In addition to his television work, Dobbs has authored several books, sharing his perspectives on the economy, politics, and the challenges facing the United States. He has also hosted a nationally syndicated radio program where he continued to address similar themes. Throughout his career, Dobbs has been a polarizing figure, often attracting both supporters and critics for his views. He left CNN in 2009, but returned to the network briefly in 2011. Later in 2019, he joined Fox Business Network, where he hosted Lou Dobbs Tonight until 2021. Outside of broadcasting, Dobbs is known for his philanthropic efforts, supporting various causes related to education and veterans. His career has spanned over four decades, making him a significant figure in American media, with a lasting influence on the national conversation surrounding economic and political issues. Evelyn Thomas is an acclaimed American singer and songwriter, best known for her contributions to the dance and R&B music genres. Born on August 1, 1961, in Brooklyn, New York, she was raised in a musical family that fostered her passion for singing from an early age. Thomas honed her vocal skills in church choirs and local performances, drawing inspiration from soul legends like Aretha Franklin and Gladys Knight. In the early 1980s, she began her professional music career, releasing her debut album, High Energy, in 1984. The title track, High Energy, became a significant hit, charting well on both the Billboard Hot 100 and the Dance Club Songs chart. The song's infectious beat and Thomas's powerful vocals helped establish her as a prominent figure in the dance music scene. Throughout the late 1980s and early 1990s, Thomas released several more albums and singles, further solidifying her reputation. Her collaboration with various producers and songwriters allowed her to explore diverse musical styles, including house music and pop. Her songs often featured themes of love, empowerment, and resilience. Resonating with audiences around the world, Evelyn Thomas continues to perform and tour, captivating audiences with her dynamic stage presence and vocal talent. She remains a respected figure in the music industry, influencing a new generation of artists in the dance and R&B genres. In addition to her music career, Thomas has been involved in various philanthropic efforts, advocating for causes related to education and the arts. Her enduring legacy is marked by her ability to connect with listeners through her heartfelt performances and contributions to the dance music landscape. It was very satisfying, and I was excited about it. Francine Pascal is an American author and television producer, best known for her work in young adult literature, particularly the popular Sweet Valley High series. Born on July 19, 1938, in New York City, Pascal grew up in a creative environment that fostered her love for storytelling. After graduating from New York University with a degree in English, she began her career in publishing and writing. Initially working as a copywriter and editor, in the 1980s, Pascal conceived the idea for Sweet Valley High, a series centered around the lives of identical twin sisters, Jessica and Elizabeth Wakefield. The first book was published in 1983, and the series quickly gained immense popularity, resonating with young readers across the globe. Over the next decade, Pascal wrote more than 150 books in the Sweet Valley universe, including spin-offs and companion series, establishing a loyal fan base. The success of the books led to adaptations, including a television series that aired from 1994 to 1997, 
further expanding the franchise's reach, in addition to Sweet Valley High, Pascal has authored several other book series and standalone novels, exploring themes of friendship, romance, and identity. Her writing often reflects the challenges and experiences faced by young adults, making her stories relatable and engaging for her audience. Throughout her career, Francine Pascal has received numerous accolades for her contributions to literature, particularly in the young adult genre. Today, she continues to write and inspire new generations of readers. Her legacy in young adult fiction is marked by her ability to create memorable characters and stories that resonate with the complexities of adolescence. Bobby Banas is an accomplished American dancer, choreographer, and actor known for his significant contributions to film and television. Born on February 24, 1935, in New York City, Banas developed a passion for dance at a young age, which led him to study various dance styles. His talent quickly garnered attention, and he became a prominent figure in the dance community. Banas gained widespread recognition for his work as a dancer in several iconic films during the 1960s and 1970s, including West Side Story, 1961, where he showcased his exceptional skills in a variety of dance numbers. He also appeared in other notable productions, such as The King and I and The Music Man, contributing to his reputation as a versatile performer. In addition to his film work, Banas has choreographed numerous stage productions, collaborating with some of the biggest names in the industry. His creativity and innovative choreography have earned him accolades and respect among peers. Bobby Banas has also ventured into television, appearing in various shows and specials, where he continued to showcase his dancing prowess. Throughout his career, Banas has inspired countless dancers and remains a respected figure in the performing arts community. Charles Cyphers is an American character actor best known for his work in film and television, particularly in the horror genre. Born on July 28, 1939, in Niagara Falls, New York, Cyphers attended Sacramento State College, where he developed a passion for acting. His career took off in the early 1970s, and he quickly became a recognizable face in Hollywood, especially due to his collaborations with director John Carpenter. Cyphers is perhaps most famous for his roles in Carpenter's iconic films. He appeared as Sheriff Lee Brackett in the original 1978 horror classic Halloween and reprised the role in Halloween 2, 1981, and Halloween Kills, 2021. He also worked with Carpenter on other well-known films such as The Fog, 1980, where he played the role of Dan O'Bannon and Escape from New York, 1981, in which he portrayed the Secretary of State. Aside from his work in Carpenter's films, Cyphers has appeared in a variety of television shows, including The Dukes of Hazard, Starsky and Hutch, Hill Street Blues, and Buffy the Vampire Slayer. His ability to portray authority figures, often as law enforcement or military personnel, became a staple of his acting career. Though not a leading man, Cyphers' consistent and memorable supporting roles have earned him a loyal following, especially among horror fans. His contributions to the genre have solidified his status as a cult favorite. Even in his later years, Cyphers continues to make appearances in horror films and conventions, celebrating his enduring legacy in Hollywood. Patty Yasutake is an American actress best known for her role as Nurse Alyssa Ogawa in the Star Trek franchise. Born on September 6, 1953, in Los Angeles, California, she is of Japanese descent and grew up in a family that, that valued both education and the arts. Yasutake attended UCLA, where she initially studied communications but later gravitated toward acting, sparking her interest in a performance career. Yasutake's breakthrough role came with her portrayal of Nurse Ogawa on Star Trek The Next Generation. She appeared in over 15 episodes from 1990 to 1994 and reprised her role in the feature films Star Trek Generations, 1994, and Star Trek First Contact, 1996. Her character was a trusted member of the USS Enterprise's medical team and became a fan favorite due to her warm and professional demeanor. Yasutaki's involvement in the Star Trek universe cemented her place in sci-fi history and earned her recognition at conventions and among the series' dedicated fanbase. In addition to Star Trek, 
Yasutake has appeared in a variety of other television series and films. Her television credits include roles in popular shows like Grey's Anatomy, L.A. Law, Judging Amy, Without a Trace, and E.R. Her versatility as an actress has allowed her to take on both dramatic and comedic roles, showcasing her range across different genres. Yasutake has also contributed to Asian American representation in Hollywood, breaking barriers at a time when roles for Asian actors were limited. Throughout her career, she has been an advocate for diversity in the entertainment industry. Today, she remains active in television and film, while continuing to make appearances at Star Trek conventions, celebrating her legacy in the franchise. This is CNN Breaking News. Joy Bahar, born Josephine Victoria Akuto on October 7, 1942, in Brooklyn, New York, is an American comedian, actress, writer, and television host. She is best known as a longtime co-host of the daytime talk show The View. Raised in a Catholic, Italian-American family, Bihar earned a bachelor's degree in sociology from Queens College and a master's degree in English education from Stony Brook University. Before venturing into show business, she worked as an English teacher. Bihar's entertainment career began in the 1980s as a stand-up comedian, appearing on popular shows like Good Morning America and hosting Way Off Broadway. Her big break came in 1997 when she joined the original panel of The View, created by Barbara Walters. Known for her sharp wit, comedic timing, and outspoken views on politics and social issues, Bihar quickly became a standout personality on the show. She left The View briefly in 2013 but returned in 2015 and has remained a key figure ever since. In addition to her television work, Bihar has acted in films and theater, written books, and hosted other shows like The Joy Bihar Show on HLN and Say Anything on Current TV. Throughout her career, she has been a staunch advocate for women's rights, LGBTQ issues, and progressive causes, using her platform to speak out on various societal matters. In terms of health, Bihar has been open about her personal health struggles. In 2022, she revealed a near-fatal ectopic pregnancy experience in the late 1970s, which required emergency surgery. This event led to her speaking publicly about women's reproductive rights and health. Now in her 80s, Bihar remains active in television, and there are no current reports of significant health issues affecting her career. Thank you for joining us on episode of Fame Story TV, where we remember and pay tribute to the lives and stories of remarkable people who have left us today. If this video touched your heart, please consider honoring their memory by giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel. See you in the next episode.